Uh, let's start with a survey. Who here is using pandas? Anyway, anyone by any, by any chance not using it? <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> uh, second question, less hands up probably. Who knows which was their first pandas version? <laughs> what was it? I remember there was a, there was a fee in there. A what? No, but you know, currently we're at dot twenty three dot four. Anyone my chance is interested? I started with about dot sixteen. Uh, the first reason I'm going to talk about it is that the motivation for this talk is that at work we're using two uh, environments. One of them is old. One of them is new for some reasons, and. Um, in one, we use dot seventeen, and in one, we use dot twenty three, which is the newest one. And what I've learned is that it changed a lot, and that there are many new things in new pandas that you can do instead of writing things on your own. The first, if I give you a task, I'm sure any you're smart people. I'm sure any of you will get this task done. The question is how many lines of code it's going to take you, and how complex mentally it's going to be. And uh, that's the main motivation here in this slide is that uh, the computer will understand anything, but there's, there are people that need to maintain this code, probably you in two weeks from now, and then you'll hate the moment that you've written this bad code. If you write a better code, that's better for you. Uh, I'll have to start with this slide about my company. We are Bluevine. Uh, we're an online lender. We give money to businesses in the United States. We accept this money back. And what the data science is doing is uh, trying to assess the risk of our actually getting the money back. We are hiring specifically if you're the kind of people that are uh, very experienced developers, but you're here because you feel like you're a junior in data science. We look for these kind of people. So come talk to me if you're by any chance something like that. If you're not like that, we're still hiring. So uh, also <laughs> come talk to me. Um, I think that's enough about the introduction. So let's start with uh, some imports. And we'll start with the first hex. So first, we need some data, right? We're going to take some data, and we're going to move it into this pipeline. Um, and eventually, we're going to have actually a pipeline. We'll we have some sections. And explain those uh, stages in the pipeline. So first of all, we need to load the data. We have some CSV data of timestamps. Uh, that's specifically the data. Um, we read it, and then we need to do some housekeeping work of uh, sorting the values by the date, and then set index on the date. And then there's another column here that I don't need. It's well updated. Uh, so we'll just drop it. The first hack is this. This looks ugly, right? It's hard to read. And then it gets uh, through the line that you can't see. So the first thing is work with uh, lines, right? This is better. You actually see what you can do. The thing is, um, you see those slashes. I don't like those for uh, a good reason. First of all, you can write comments inside, right? You sometimes run to explain what you're going to do. You can't do this. You can't just do a documentation line. Uh, it just wouldn't work. We expected this error. Also, sometimes it could be very frustrating when you get this kind of error. Anyone understands why this happens? Well, because of this space, right? <laughs> now it's going to work. But that's a bad thing. So the penny dropped first when I realized, well, you can do users, and we can do this, right? This works. But also, because we, we started with a parenthesis, sorry. We can do this, et cetera. This also going to work, right? So the first thing, thing, the first hack, this is not like any smart hack, but like if you need to take one thing from this talk, take this. Um, start with a parenthesis, and then you can write a pipeline, and then just this pipeline looks beautiful. You can write uh, comments in it. You can do anything you want, and it's, this is going to work. Second hack that we need, where we have this, um, you can see here that we have uh, event types. We have one, five, and seven. Uh, let's say we want to uh, change those for re some reason. So first of all, we know we have the map function. I guess you know that one. 
Um, the nice thing is that uh, a dictionary is a callable. So a map accepts a callable, accepts a function, and then it gives you new values uh, that runs this function on the values. Uh, the, a dictionary is a callable, like uh, if, like the first classes in uh, math in the university. You can they tell you you can define a function by if you're less than this and if you're uh, larger than this, and that's that's okay. So that's kind of uh, the same thing. If you're equal to one, then that's A. If you're equal to five, that's B. And this will work. So uh, this changes things a lot faster than writing uh, like many ifs. And now uh, we're starting the actual talk. You can't see the entire meme, uh, and, but it uh, works with time series data. No one? OK, who hates it? Expect a lot more people, but OK. Uh, cool. So resample, who knows a resample? Cool, that's a lot of more people than I thought. Uh, the thing is that many of you will know many things here, uh, but probably none of you will know everything. I didn't know before I wrote this talk. Uh, and if anyone gets at least one thing, I'm good with that. So let's say I want to group by and see how many timestamps or how many events happened each hour. Uh, how are we going to do that? So the first go to thing would be let's group by the hour right but that's that's hard because first i need from the timestamp understanding what's the hour so we need to do uh the index the, the time is the index so let's take the index from this extract the hour extract the day and then group by and first of all there's this is many lines of code eventually you get uh basically you, you kind of get what you want but not exactly uh, this is many lines of codes. We have unneeded columns now. Uh, the index is not a time anymore. It's like a date and an integer. And the worst thing is that we have missing rows. Uh, at 7 o'clock, like between 7 and 8, nothing happened. So group by just doesn't uh, use that. If you do resample, you can resample. You can tell pandas I want H. H is by the hour. And then just count. And this happens a lot faster. We learned something new. <laughs> awesome. It's even better when you use, like I said, OK, by one hour, it's easy. I could have done this by group by. The question becomes, what happens if I want 10 minutes? Well, that would be a mess writing with uh, like the old way, extracting the minutes, then cutting some intervals. Well, that's a mess. You can tell pandas resample by 10 T. T is for minute. I'm not sure why, because M is for month, I guess. Uh, and you can do this and just give you uh, like uh, 5.0, 5.10, 520. You can even do, if you for some reason want to, you can do like prime numbers. <laughs> pandas will be OK with that. Uh, you have a list of pandas abbreviation. And the beautiful thing about uh, time index, and now you can slice by those indexes, indice, indices. Uh, you can ask pandas, give me everything that happened. Uh, I want to see the data frame at around 9 o'clock. So you just give it, well, the date and the hour. So it's say 21, and pandas gives you uh, 21. Let's move back to the 10 minutes, because that's how I'm used to this talk. <laughs> right, so everything that happens at the hour of 9 o'clock, you can tell it the, the, the same way you index by integers. You can just tell, give it some uh, string of date. And you say, I want everything that happens after uh, 6.31. Pandas uh, is not doing that. <laughs> Sorry, before uh, 6.31. And here you can see it, it finishes at 6.30. Uh, Cool, so now time series becomes a lot <coughs> nicer to me because the, I, I hated time series because of mostly the group by. <laughs> so awesome, That's, that this is out of the way. But the thing is with the time index, that now you can do more amazing things. You want a rolling window? We used to write that, like take, I don't know, the last uh, six rows, maybe loop by some things. You don't have to do this anymore. You have uh, rolling mean, so you just do a rolling. Rolling gives you some kind of object that's like a group by, and then you tell it the function that you want, the mean, exactly like in group by, and it does that for you. Uh, we're, I have a chart for that, but basically uh, it's a long, a large font. 
Uh, you can do expanding mean, uh, EWM, the exponential weighted moving. Um, you, tell, you tell you how many periods back, I, I said six, and it just does that for you. We'll learn something new. Awesome. You can use it with apply for specifically how I want to do our geometric mean. Well, I didn't find a function for that, so I just wrote one. So I take the product of each group. And then I do the uh, the root by the same degree. So I, I'm writing that. So I'm doing apply. I'm doing the rolling. Then I'm doing apply, and it works. And the most beautiful thing, which blew my mind first, uh, is that you can combine group by and the resample. So I, I I had three types of events. So I want to have a column for each type of event, and then resample for each column. So that's not problem in not a problem in modern parentheses. You do a group by, then you do resample, then you say which kind of apply you want. We want to count. Uh, I'm doing some renaming for some, yeah. and it happens. It gives you the group by the uh, event type and the date, and you just get this. You get you realize. Um, well, yeah, this was funnier when you can see the entire thing. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Sorting. Who hates sorting? Yeah, so the thing with pandas that used to be is that you have indexes. Right? The, you're talking about object indexes, indexes, not indices, I think. Um, and then you, have, you can sort by the values, but then you have indexes, so you can maybe sort by the index. So let's start by sorting by the values. Everybody knows that. You can just say sort values and by the amount. The amount is the values column, so that's uh, not a problem. The nice thing is when you want to sort by index, you just tell pandas sort index. Well, makes sense. Uh, the thing is it's sorted by the event type and only then by date. So what are we doing if we want to do it the other way around? We tell it, do it by the level one, the right? Level zero, level one. Uh, awesome, that works. The thing is, and that's, that's really new in like the last pandas, is that now the in indexes are accepted in the sort values. And if I want to do a sort by the amount and then the event type, you just tell it sort values. If the index has a name, you just tell it, do it by the amount and the event type. And pandas, modern pandas, gives that to you for free. <laughs> stack and unstack. Well, uh, anybody knows what uh, unstack is doing? Nobody. <laughs> it's kind of like a pivot table that you're used to in Excel, although pandas has a pivot table. We, wa we had a double index or multi-index. And you, you want to see, uh, take one of them and put it as the columns. And then write the values and inside this uh, two-dimension table. Uh, so you can do it by pivot table. When I wrote this talk, I thought this is going to be longer, but actually they made pivot table better in itself. So that's uh, also another nice thing. But you can do it like this. But still, you have to remember what, which values I want, which columns, which indexes. Well, that's a lot of things to think about. Oh, you can just do unstack by what? By the event type. So I wanted the event type I want to make into columns. I want to leave out uh, the other index. I can remember which one. That's not important because pandas knows that for me. And this is also works. Um, now you want to do stack. What stack? It's the other way around from unstack. So if I'm, I've taken this unstack table, I'm doing a task and uh, a, a stack. And I get uh, the same thing, but, but it's not exactly the same thing, right? Because first of all, you can see pandas is not doing this pretty. That's because it's a series and not a pandas data frame. Uh, second of all, the levels are reversed. We used to have the event type on the left. Um, and the level, well, anyway, here's a few tips on how to get rid of this. So we're doing the stack, then instead of saying, uh, like a constructed, do a data frame with the series. Pandas has a nice meta that's called to frame. Uh, and you tell it like the name of the column that's of the series. Then you can do swap levels. So we had a multi index like this, and now it's like this. That's it. Instead of starting to maybe reset the index, then set it again by the way you want it, 
swap level and it's doing this for you. Then you sort by index and Pandas is doing all this for free. And then if anybody doesn't know, if, if you want to compare two data frames, if they're equal, Pandas has a method for that. I used to do like, is this equal this? And if everything is true, then this, then it's true. But then if you have nones, then none is not equal to none for some reason. So it's false. So you have to write a method. Anyway, Pandas is doing this for you. Clip is a nice function uh, that's fairly easy to remember. So a very common test is that some you have, sometimes you have values that are not on the interval that you think they should be, and you kind of need to fix the data. Uh, in our case, let's say that if I have more than less than five readings or more than 12, I know it's wrong. So I'll just do the, those as the min and the max. In the old way, I started to iterate over the columns. Then I'm saying, if it's uh, the clipped version of this is that if it's lower than the lower bound, give it the lower bound. If it's larger than the upper bound, give it the upper bound. It works, but not very uh, nicely. The, the better way is just tell pandas do a clip for me. Here's the lower bound. Here's the upper bound. We've switched, I don't know, five lines into one. Anybody thinks this is cool? Awesome. <laughs> Re-index, so I have this problem. I know the data actually is not from five to 11, it's from four to 12. And another thing, I know that I have more event types that maybe just didn't happen today that are called Y and Z. So what are we supposed to do in the old way? I would say, okay, we have a new column that's Y and it's zero and then it's Z with a zero, the index. Well, that's many lines of code that I didn't even, even think about in the new, uh, pandas, you can just tell it re-index. So uh, first of all, we start with, let's create a date range. A range is an index. So you say start at four, finish at a bit before uh, midnight, and then you give it the frequency. The frequency is the same as you remember the H, the 15 T. At this specific uh, case, I want to just take the frequency of the original data frame You say, uh, PT, that's an original data frame, index, and what's the frec, uh, and it gives you the uh, the index. Now it's an object called index. It's not very interesting. It's interesting when, it's when you add it to the data frame and you tell the data frame re-index, with which index, this index, on what columns, the E types, those are those with the Y and Z added. And also, if anything is missing, give it a fill value of zero. So now you get uh, in one line of code or maybe two with the date range, you get uh, the same, the exact, the exact data frame that you wanted. We we'll put this in a function, later we'll understand why. Method chaining, what I love about pandas is you can in like a one line of code, like logically for the computer, it's one line of code. We know that we can see it, we can write it as many lines. <laughs> But in one line of code, you can do actually the entire pipeline, not like break it and then say data frame this column equals this. It's something we used to do. We can do this in also the chaining of the method of the pipeline, and that's called assign. So let's uh, let's say I want to take the mean of all the events. Like it doesn't matter how many events happen. Just I wanted the mean of all the sum columns. I can tell it assign mean all equals and what's the function, what, what, what I want there, that's a function on the data frame, and it just gives it to you in the same one-liner uh, method chaining. But what happens if I want to take something longer? I want to do some really uh, complex function on the data frame that I can't actually write in one code. Well, I can write a function that would be a bit uglier, but I take it outside to my package. I've, I've written like a helper pack, a helper package. Uh, but I want to, I want to take this function. This function accepts a data frame and returns a data frame. So if I have that, I can put it inside the pipeline. How am I doing this with the method called pipe? So I'm telling it, let's write this helper function. It takes, it adds some number to the column. So uh, first method would be to actually write this nesting, nested functions, though it happened in reverse, like SQL. I don't like that. Uh, you can make it easier with three lines of uh, 
data frame equals function on data frame, data frame equals function on data frame, etc. cetera. Uh, the more beautiful way uh, would be to just tell it pipe, pipe add to call. Now I don't need, because I want to do 200 to A, those are uh, the default parameters, so I don't need to write anything. If I want to change those, I just give it, give the pipe the new parameters, so add 100 to B, 500 to C, and uh, you get this. So uh, I'm moving, I'm starting with the end of the talk. <laughs> Why am I telling you all of this? Uh, beautiful code tells a story. The way people understand is by is with with stories with actual with actual English that tells them what's happening. So if we're writing beautiful code, the maintainers later again probably you in a month. You want to see what's happening as fast as you can and not start uh, fighting with the code to see what actually happens. And now we're going to do this entire talk in one cell. <laughs> And that's it. Those are many lines of code, but they actually speak pretty good English. You take a CSV, you read a CSV, then you assign it some function uh, which turns ones into A, uh, fives into B, etc. I sort the values, I set them as an index, I drop something that I don't need, I group by, I resample, I apply. It's everything is English, right? Is there like English words that you understand? Uh, I've put the remove multi index as a function. I can add it as a pipe, but uh, it still remains a story. Uh, eventually, I take um, a slice of it, just the main event, and I want to do some maybe time series analysis. For this, I need sliding windows. So I've written a uh, pretty ugly function that's called make uh, sliding windows. It's pretty ugly, but the thing is that unless I maintain this specific function, I don't need to go back to it. I just tell it pipe, make sliding windows, and that's all I need to know. Uh, and then you can see this happens. You get uh, timestamps, you get like min event, min event minus one, minus two, etc. cetera. Uh, this used to be the end of the talk. Uh, I have some bonus material if you want it. If not, what? Okay, so uh, a few more function methods that I like about pandas. Um, those are not in the same pipeline as before. But uh, who needed, uh, like, did you have a use case when you needed to see how a column changes, like by percentage? Like, this values is uh, two times larger than the values before that. You used to write it by making some, uh, like, shifting it by one, then see how much is this. Well, you don't need to because pandas has a function for that. It's called percent change, and pandas is doing it for you for free. Uh, interval index, that's something fairly new that I've learned about uh, recently. Uh, the thing with time series is when I say on 3 o'clock we had seven events, is that 3 to 4 or 2 to 3? Both answers are OK as long as it's consistent. And the problem becomes consistency between developers, between data scientists, and between you and yourself, and between sometimes you want to group by, and then you, you started thinking about it, and it's not easy. Uh, so pandas has an interval index. So you remember a daytime range that we've done before. Now you have inter interval range. You say when do you want it to start, uh, when do you want it to end. So we started by the, the same data frame that we had before. We start at the mean time, we end with the max time and a bit more, and at what frequency, and pandas gives that to you. You can see that it's a new object. It's called interval index. Um, I didn't show you how it looks. Uh, looks ugly. Uh, <laughs> why is that not working? We know why. Well, that's nicer. So you can see everything between 530 and 545, etc. cetera. Uh, why is that nice? Because then I can ask pandas uh, what happens on 
637. Well, uh, I'll start with the later uh, cell. If you add the time index, nothing happens in 637. Pandas knows about 630 and 645. If you give it a, uh, an inter uh, interval range, well, <laughs> this is the one. Uh, I just gave it an integer range, and then it knows, well, the name is 630 to 645, and those are the values. Anybody knew about this before? Awesome. Split strings, did you, add, did you have a case when you need to split the strings but still wanted them inside the data frame, but then you only wanted the first uh, word, and then you've done this, but then it gives you uh, a column with a list, then how do you extract the list? Well, you have a nice keyword argument that's called expand equals true, and it just gives you that, and then you can just say it will give me the first column. Uh, toy examples with pandas testing, that's one thing I want one thing I want you to learn but then we'll get uh, we'll use it in a second uh, for some things so if you just want to test some stuff and you want to get uh, a data frame fast you have inside the uh, pandas util testing you have a make time data frame and then I, I've told it I want it 15 by 10 and it just gives me a 15 by 10 uh, data frame uh, now we can play with it. So the last thing, last thing I want to talk about is research with style. This will probably not go into production, but sometimes you want to take a data frame, then you want to see it with some colors. So what I used to do is exporting it as an Excel file, then do some conditional formatting. Um, then I started using Mac, and I didn't have Excel, and the Numbers app is not very good. Um, Pandas do everything for you. So let's uh, put some nuns into it just to see that uh, uh, you have, so you, you get an access. So you do, you take the data frame and first of all, you tell it dot style. And then you got a styler object that you can, you have many methods on. Uh, the first method is highlight null. So you're gonna, you're gonna see in a second that the, the nulls are gonna be red. But then you can also tell it uh, highlight max and highlight mean. Uh, with steel blue and gold, uh, what you can see is that I've told it give the max on the uh, axis one and the mean on axis zero. Uh, so if we're looking for that, pandas will start coloring everything. The nuns are red. Uh, the max on columns, or you have one blue in each column and one yellow in each row. Uh, you can see sometimes you want to see in Excel, you have like give me a value range. Uh, pandas has that it's just called background gradient. You can see that the uh, lower values are pretty white, the larger values are pretty dark blue. Uh, you can give it a custom function. So in, in my case, I'm saying I'm telling like it, you need to know a bit of CSS code, but like the simplest of the CSS code. You tell it if the value is less than minus 100, the background color is red, and if it's larger than green. If the absolute value is something, then yellow. Uh, you can just tell the styling object, apply a map for the function, and you get everything. That's nice if you have like many columns and you want to see some uh, irregular data or stuff like that. That's pretty nice to research with it. Uh, the last thing is the bars. Uh, it just gives you the data like this. It even has uh, the like two-sided bars. Oh, it's nice I put it in the end. I see it. you like it. <laughs> Awesome. So to summary, this is, uh, we need to make this a bit smaller. This is Greg Rada. He's a guy who wrote uh, like a very known tutorial on pandas. It's been seen like hundreds of thousands of times. And it, it, he's saying that uh, he's doing it for six years and he's reading the tutorial and still he doesn't know uh what's what's smoothly index and that's okay if you don't remember anything from my talk that's okay you don't have to go home and like write in the notebook resample the style the stack and stack it's not important the thing is that you realize that if you have some uh objective that you want to do and you can realize that maybe i'm not the first one that's doing it in the world then probably modern pandas have the thing for you uh, the best thing, thing I've learned about in the last year, like now it's a few months, but the resample thing, it's like, it's amazing. It's changed my life. Those are some resources that uh, I've used. And that's it. Questions?
Everybody's a pandas expert. 